So with our young folk right now, those present and those at home, we have a, a little bit of a task right now. Let's see if we can do this. And by the way, the rest of you can listen in. It's fine. But this chapter, which I just read, begins with the word therefore. And we always have to pay attention to what happens before. So here's what we're going to try to do, and this might feel like a long shot. Let's try to do a a summary of Romans 1 through 11 in five minutes or less. Debbie just laughed at me. That's okay. All right. It's a letter. No shock there. Okay. But let's see. Think. Okay. Chapter 1, Paul talks a lot about salutations and ingredients to one another. He talks about the power of God and how it's present in everything and in everyone. Chapters 2 and 3, it seems as though Paul's trying to make a commentary about the law and how we have consciences. And it doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile. Everyone at least has a conscience. And so don't go against your conscience. But then we get to chapter 4. We're like, my goodness. But even though we all have the law given to us if we're Jewish, or if we have consciences, let's say we're just Gentiles, we still have this understanding that, my goodness, we still do nothing right. But then we get to chapter 5, and then we have this conversation that Paul brings up about, okay, there was Adam, and he wasn't the best. But then we've got Christ, who's kind of like a new Adam. He's kind of the Adam that should have been, but we didn't have the Adam that should have been. We had Adam instead of Christ, but now we have Christ. Okay, chapter 6. Be dead to sin, live in Christ. Okay, but then we get to chapter 7, and then we have this conversation again. What do we do with the law? What do we do with all the rules in the Bible? Are they good or bad? Because they seem to show us that we do nothing right. Does that mean that the law is evil? No, the law is not evil. It's probably good that we see how evil we can be. But then we get to chapter 8, and then we have this conversation back and forth about what does the Holy Spirit mean in the midst of all this? Are any of us condemned? And then he's got this wonderful comment in the the first verse, if anyone is in Christ, there is no condemnation. Okay, well, I don't live in the law, then we live in Christ. So that's nice. But then Paul does this excursion through chapter 8 that has this beautiful high point and perhaps you know it I'm going to pull it up right here this high point at the end of chapter 8 where Paul says I am sure that neither life nor death nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation anything created will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord nothing can separate us from the love of God oh, that's wonderful but then Paul goes further like a good rabbi usually does and he has this conversation well what about Israel but what about the church Does grace come to Israel, but not to the church? No, it comes to the church. But then what does the church do with people who are Israel? And then Paul keeps going until he gets to this final point, and it's at the end of chapter 11 where he says, everyone's disobedient, and so God chooses to be merciful to all. And so then we come to the very end of chapter 11 where Paul says, Essentially, the law and faith and everything has equalized all of us. None of us do this thing called life right. But God's love will not be separated from us because of anything that we do. And God has a plan to be merciful to all because we've all been disobedient. And then he finishes with this beautiful song. Oh, the depth and of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable are his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that we might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. And that's where we have chapter 12 start. Therefore, do not live like people of this age. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then really, 
the entirety of chapter 12 is really an ethical statement. How are we to live knowing that nothing can separate us from the love of God and that God chooses to be merciful to all Jew and Gentile alike? Chapter 12, the therefore is very important because it stands on chapters 1 through 11. If you want to know what the church is supposed to look like at its best, it's a collective of people that live in grace and they embody Romans 12. This week, may we all settle into two truths. Nothing can separate us from the love of God and the mercy of God comes to all of us no matter what our nationality background is. So come, be a part of Christ's church, and let's live the kingdom well. Amen.